In this video, we'll be using Fusion 360 surfacing to create this complex handle. We're going to start from a complete scratch file and build everything from the basic shape and learn how to create these features, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're gonna to add to our Surfacing Mastery series. And this was a question that came in through my email uh, probably a couple weeks ago at this point. But it was about how to create this sort of indention shape on a handle, whether it's a hand tool or a knife or whatever the case is, whatever you're modeling here. We wanna talk about a couple of things. We wanna talk about how to just generally create this shape. And you can see that this edge goes all the way to the back. And then we also want to learn how to do the same thing and make the edge fade or disappear as it goes into the rest of the body. So this is by no means an easy task. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, there are limitations to surfacing tools in Fusion 360. So we're going to go through the process of how I modeled this. And we're going to be, again, starting from scratch. So to get started, begin a new untitled document. And we are going to be using a surfacing tool set. So I'm going to just move all the way over to surfacing and begin by creating a new sketch on the top plane. I wanna make sure that we are doing a 2D sketch, and the first thing that we wanna do is create a top-down view of the handle. That doesn't need to be perfect by any means, but what we wanna do is create the top and the bottom, and I'm just gonna use a fit point spline. I'm gonna start at the back, sort of in this upper quadrant here, and I'll do the same thing over here, just to start in an endpoint, and then hit escape to get off of the spline tool. We're going to use these shapes to just simply rough out what we want this handle to look like. All we really need is the top and the bottom edge. We don't really need the front or the back. Not really going to be going all the way through the end of the model. We're just looking at the handle. So once we have these two shapes, I'm going to finish the sketch, go to extrude on my surface tools, and I'm going to bring these two down. The main reason that we do this is so that way when we start to create a, a new shape that we have the edges that we can use for tangency. Now this is really important because when we mirror the handle over to the other side, we wanna make sure that we have a nice smooth transition. Now whether this was extruded or you created you know, sort of an arc here, uh, really you just wanna make sure that when the curvature goes across that mirror line that it has whatever shape you're looking for. Now in the case of a handle, we want it to be smooth, so that's why we're just extruding these. So the next thing that we wanna do is create the shape of the handle in 3D. I'm gonna be doing this with a 3D sketch, so I'm gonna start a new sketch, just pick whatever plane you want, rotate the model around again, and toggle on the 3D sketch option. We're going to be using again a fit point spline, I'm gonna add an intermediate point, so you may wanna rotate this around, select that plane, just so that we're working in plane for now, and then snap over here and hit the green check mark. We're gonna do the same thing at the front, sort of building an intermediate point, and then hit the green check mark, and then hit escape. The main reason for that intermediate point is because we want to use horizontal vertical, and if we don't have that intermediate point, essentially what we're going to get is a line that goes straight across, so we need it to go up in 3D before we add this constraint. We can hit escape, select and delete those midpoints. And then we can play around with the handles to get the overall shape. So for example, this back one here, I'm gonna select, hit M for move copy, and then just shorten it up. So that way it's sort of building out that shape. I can do the same thing to the other side. We have to make sure that we are grabbing the end of the handle. If you grab the entire handle, nothing's gonna happen because we've already applied that tangency to it. And you just want to, again, play around with the shape. The main concern here is that we are using a vertical constraint. We wanna make sure that this curve, which is going to be the guiding curve for our loft, that it is not going to have a crease or a seam with these edges. Remember these edges, we're done by extruding them in sort of a 2D orientation. They're going in the Z direction, which means that when we create our loft, we want the edges of those splines to also be vertical. So now we're gonna go to create loft, and we're gonna go from one edge to the other, and then we're gonna add our rails. Now, important step here is to make sure that you go back and set these to tangent. 
You can also make them curvature continuous. Uh, honestly, in this case, it's not really going to matter because these are extruded surfaces. It's straight, has no curvature. We're only driving the direction. You do also want to make sure that if you have any sort of curvature or funkiness on the edges of these that you do align to the edges. Uh, so and we're going to say OK. And then we can hide these for now. I'm going to say V on the keyboard to hide those. Uh, you can also just simply come over here and hit that eye icon. So now we've got the handle shape. This is our starting point, and this is where we're going to begin. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to build out the shape that goes all the way to the back. We're going to do this with a sketch. Make sure that we are using a 2D sketch. You can leave 3D sketch on, but it honestly just gets a bit complicated. We're also going to be using project include for this back edge and this bottom edge. And we're going to say OK. So for this sketch now, what we want to do is we're going to be creating the transition or the cutout. So again, fit point spline. I'm going to go from somewhere in here looking at sort of the shadows and reflections. I'm going to come down to a point here, hit escape to get off my spline tool, and then just build out the shape that I want. I'm not worried about tangency or anything at this point. Really all I'm looking to do is get the shape of that relief. The next thing I need to do is start a new sketch. And the reason I need to start a new sketch is because I need to create the bump out that happens. So you can do this in a couple of different orders. One order would be to use the uh, this extruded surface, but also to create a ruled tangent surface on this back edge. Uh, and again, sort of just driving the shape because we're going to be patching this. So when we create our um, extra sketch, what we can do here is we can say split face. We can split this back face and this bottom face as well, all three of these. And then we can use that spline as our split tool, allowing it to extend. Now, the reason we're allowing it to extend is because we want this edge to be selectable. We don't want it to go all the way over. It causes problems when we try to use it as a loft guide or a patch. Uh, what we have here is a three-sided area. So that three-sided area, we're going to need to use a patch on. The loft just isn't going to work very well. So now that we split this up, I'm going to select it and hit delete, get rid of it, do another sketch on my top plane. So I'm going to go to a top view. I'm going to use P to project and just bring this edge in and then create another spline. So endpoint to endpoint, hit escape to get off my spline tool, and then create the section where you want it to actually start to bump in or have that grip shape. From here, once again, we're going to extrude because we want to drive tangency on the midline. And this face isn't actually needed anymore, so you can delete it if you want. Just hit delete to get rid of it. And now we can use patch. We want to make sure that enable chaining is turned off. Uh, you can also toggle off group edges. We don't want that in this case if it is on. It does remember your last settings. And then select this third one here. Now, if we did everything right, we should see a surface generate. If you happen to have missed the endpoints of the bottom edge here, then likely you won't see anything. But as we look on the screen, we can see edge one, two, and three. Edge three is going to be across our mirror line, so we want to make sure we drive tangency there. We're going to leave edge one and edge two sharp. We're just going to say they're connected and say OK. Once again, select this and V like Victor to hide where you can use the eye icon. So that's the first one. Uh, we're going to come back and add a fillet to this later. But the second one is a bit trickier. And the second one's trickier because it ends inside of here. It doesn't go all the way to the edge. So we don't have a nice clean section. Uh, so hopefully this causes trouble like it did when I created this one here. I had to do a couple of workarounds. And, and hopefully that's the case because we want to make sure we understand uh, all the options that we have. So again, another sketch, top plane. Again, project. This time I'm going to project this. So P on the keyboard for project. Grab these two edges. And now what I want to do is I'm going to create a line somewhere from inside of this spline here. Just come out in space. And then I'm going to create my fit point spline to go from that and down wherever I want that intersection to be and hit escape to get off the tool. Uh, so once again, we're going to just build out that rough shape. We're going to finish the sketch. We are going to use split face once more. Uh, the main reason that I'm using split face is because I want it to split this bottom face and I don't want it to trim it. 
I could use it as a trim tool, but honestly, split face sometimes is just a bit easier. So this is now the section that we want to patch. Uh, I don't really need that face. I can select and delete it if I want to get rid of it. But I do need to create another sketch on the top. Uh, you could combine some of these if you really wanted to, but I'm going to just do them in individual sketches to make sure we understand. But we're going to project that. And notice that I'm using project a lot. This edge here was built on the top plane. So project or include that geometry is going to give me the exact same results. If your design happens to be on a different plane, then you have to be careful because you're going to probably miss those intersection points. But whenever you can, whenever possible, work about those default planes. It'll really help you with symmetry, and it's just going to be much easier. So this one, I'm going to have this cut in. Again, nothing really special here. We're going to extrude it. Uh, keep in mind that E on the keyboard is extrude for the solid tools. It's actually different than this one, so E doesn't work here. Uh, so you will need to, to actually click on that button. Or if you want to, you can toggle on a shortcut key if you want. So for example, you can change the shortcut keys. You can also pin it to your shortcuts, which is the S key. So you can see it there. Uh, and you can also search for it here. I'm going to remove it from my shortcuts. I like to leave it mostly default, but for, for your purposes, if you're using it over and over again, it speeds up the workflow. So now that we have sort of this section, there's one more thing that I want to do because this I want to drive a bit different. So I'm going to create a new sketch. Pick any plane, doesn't really matter in this case. I'm going to toggle on 3D sketch, and then we are going to use a spline where you're going to connect to one edge and connect to the other and hit the green check mark and hit escape. Select one of the endpoints, M to move copy, and then start to create some curvature. So this is going to be an internal rail for when we loft. Uh, this gets a little tricky because now we've got these edges and these edges are not really going to work very well for loft inputs. Well, this one would work fine because we're not driving tangency, but this one goes all the way. Uh, so this is an indicator that we need to stitch things together before we try to loft it. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch those together. And now this edge ends here, which is exactly what we want to see. So I'm going to start a new loft. I'm going to select the starting and ending profiles first. Then I'm going to bring back my sketch. Go to my rails, we're going to use the bottom extrude, we're going to use this internal edge, and then this back rail. Now at the back rail, we can drive tangency because we want it to smooth itself out there. But at the other rails, we're going to be using fillets or another way to blend the geometry together, and we're going to say OK. So now V on the keyboard to get rid of all these extra little pieces that we don't need. We're going to stitch all of this together, and we're going to see if fillet works. Now, most most cases, fillet will work on this edge. Let's try to add a one millimeter fillet, and that looks perfectly fine. Uh, on this edge, however, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so you can see here it's working okay. You'll notice that the fillet, because of the angle, is relatively narrow here and wide here. So if we want to drive it based on chord length, we can do that. So change it to chord length, modify the value to suit what you want. And that will keep the width of the fillet consistent as it goes all the way back and fades away. So you'll notice at the back, these edges don't look great. Uh, it it kind of gets a little crazy back there. So what we're going to do is go to a top view, start a new sketch, turn off 3D sketch. And I'm just going to use my line tool. And I want to get rid of basically everything in this little section here. So I'm going to use my trim tool and just select all the areas inside of here. And you'll notice that it's going a little crazy. Um, and part of the reason is because it sort of rolled, uh, it rolled over in that area. So you can see it didn't even trim it properly, but it's probably gonna be okay. Let's try to patch this. I'm gonna enable chaining, grab everything here, group the edges and have them with tangency and say okay and see if this works. Now that doesn't look great, uh, you can see that some of the surface is overlapping. So we're going to undo that, get rid of the patch, get rid of the trim, and we're going to try our hand with split face. So this time we're going to select all the faces that we want to split, select the split tool, say OK, 
And you can see that the problem is these surfaces are sort of rolling over each other. There's a lot going on inside of here. So split face isn't working. We're going to select this and delete it. And we're going to work our way a little bit different here. So back to a top view, create a new sketch. Uh, and this is sometimes this is what happens. You'll notice that it doesn't look great back here either. Uh, so this is kind of what we have to run into sometimes if we try to use things like a fillet. Oftentimes it'll work okay, but when it gets to the point where there was tangency around here, um, it, oftentimes it just it runs into issues. So we want to attach to this, or we want to sort of cut this away. So I'm going to try to take a bigger cut. I don't generally like to do this, but in some cases we we have to use some extreme measures. See if I can get rid of that entire section. That looks okay. And now let's try to patch it. So once again, everything is going to have tangency. And we'll say OK, and we'll stitch those back together. So I'm going to use Control and 4 to hide my edges. And we can see that that edge sort of blends away. Control and 6 to bring it back. Uh, this edge back here, the fillet doesn't, doesn't look super great. So likely what we'd want to do is bring back our ruled surface, which looks like it's body 4 in my case. And I am going to fix that as well. So sketch on the top plane, and just going to use some rectangles until that fillet is OK. Let's undo that. Let's go ahead and just use, I'm just going to use a line tool instead of rectangle tool. And then we'll get rid of that as well. Once again, this is not ideal by any means, but sometimes you have to get a little creative uh, in order to do this. And you'll notice that this patch isn't working. What we need to do is turn off enabled chaining and then manually select all the edges. You might need to zoom in to get that fillet edge. And then we can carry it across this opening here. And once we have everything, it should connect. If it doesn't, that means there's probably a small gap somewhere that we missed. Uh, this can be tricky as well, and if you run into that problem, a way around that is to stitch these together. And then the enable chaining will take care of that opening for you. We're going to give them all tangency. And then what we can do is we can sort of unstitch this and, and, and get rid of it if we want to. I'm going to leave it because it doesn't really matter for this design. But that was a lot of work to get there. Uh, it certainly wasn't perfect. So you can see that there are some potential things that we need to deal with. So now that we've seen that, let's take a step back and let's figure out how to do this without that fillet. So I'm going to come back before the fillets when the geometry was still a little bit cleaner. And I want to find the sketch where I've got those edges. So sketch seven has both of those edges. This was actually the 3D sketch. But sketch seven has everything I need. So I'm going to start a new 2D sketch once again on the top plane. I'm going to use P to project this edge and this edge. I'm going to hide sketch seven. And then I want to offset these. So you need to think about the size of the fillet you want. If you want a small fillet, let's say um, a one millimeter fillet, we can offset that 0.5. I'm going to right click to repeat. I'm going to do a negative 0.5 to go the other direction. And for this example, I'm just going to be doing this front one here. The same is going to apply to this one as well. But this will at least give you an idea. L for our line tool. And then we want to come back and find the end of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply connect those and select this and make it construction, which is X on the keyboard. Then we're going to finish the sketch. So now I can use this as a trim tool, and I can get rid of that section in the middle. Uh, it can be a little bit tricky for us to select, so make sure that you are able to select that area, say OK, and then hide our sketch. So now what we've done is we've sort of built out the boundary for that section. So essentially using the cord length fillet, keeping it a consistent width. But that consistent width is based on a top-down view. It's not actually a truly consistent width. We need to do one more sketch again. Uh, and hopefully now you're starting to see why I like form so much, because doing this with sketches and surfaces 
adds quite a bit. So we're going to project these two edges. I'm going to use that blend curve tool to go between these two, just giving it tangency and finish. So now we can use patch. We have to turn off enable chaining. We can also use loft. Uh, either one should work okay. In some cases, it might not, depending on exactly where you trimmed it. But once we get to the end of this, it should work okay. And then we can add tangency everywhere, even though there is not the possibility for tangency on that. Uh, we could extrude that down and then do tangency there. That would be fine. But we want to stitch these back together. And control four. And that looks a little bit better than the fillet did. It blends away a little bit nicer. And I think that looks uh, like a better solution. Uh, so once again, multiple options, multiple ways that we can do this. Now that we have all of these together, uh, actually this back piece is still separate, so I'm gonna hide it. Now that we have this together, we should be able to mirror this across the top plane, and it should join together without a seam. Now you'll notice there's a seam here, and likely there's a seam there because when I patched it, go back to this patch. Actually, let's find this one here. Go back to this loft. I probably forgot rail one. I forgot to do tangency there. Yeah. So uh, if you notice after everything's stitched together, once it's mirrored, if it has a seam there, you probably forgot to add tangency in a loft. Um, you'll notice here at that fillet we created that there is that little bit of a line here. So in order to fix that before that patch, I would take that last sketch and extrude it down. Let's go ahead and bring that down. And then when I'm doing the patch, instead, it's going to ungroup these. Instead of using that curve there, what I want to do is I want to use the edge. Uh, so I'm going to delete the patch, which will delete the stitch. And then we're going to essentially manually grab all those edges. So once again, these are all the little things that you need to kind of identify. We're going to do tangency. And now, because of that, that little edge there that we extruded, when we stitch all this together, and when we mirror it across the midline, we should now have a nice smooth transition. So let's go ahead and mirror it. Once again, using the top plane. And now when we look there, it should look a bit smoother doesn't have that crease in it. You can still kind of tell where the midline was, but uh, it does look a little bit better. So this sharp one here, you can add a fillet. It gets a little crazy at the back edge. We could drive tangency and patch that as well. We could do the same thing that we did here and have it blend away where we wanted. But that is the general process that we would use in order to create a shape like this. Uh, it is kind of time consuming. So there is that aspect of it. You know, you have to kind of consider, could you do this with a freeform model? Do you need to control it with a surface? And is it worth all of the extra sketches and features in order to create that geometry? Um, so at the, end of the, at the end of the day, you need to decide what's best for you, but mistake. At the end of the day, you have to decide what's best for your designs, but for the most part, the forms modeling is a great way to make those concept shapes. The surface modeling, the techniques that you have to use in order to, to get the level of complexity, it works better when you have harder features, like harder edges, things that are tricky for you to do with freeform modeling. And sometimes a combination of both of those is gonna be one of, you know, one of the best ways to go about it. So hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.